Welcome to another observability clinic. Today we show you how to analyze logs without queries, getting answers in context, no matter where logs come from. And to show us what this actually looks like and why we built this, I have Michael with me. Hi, Michael, how are you? Hi, Andy, happy to be here showing again uh, awesome stuff from logs because uh, you know what? Uh, there are some questions that can be answered with logs in single click in Dynatrace, especially when you're an engineer working in an engineering team. But often when you see just an, you know this uh, awkward error message, you want to know what happened before and after this log line. This is something we can answer with single click. And also with Davis problems in your environment, we can also show you uh, the root cause that can be also found in logs again with a single click. So this is actually the things that I want to uh, show you uh, today during our uh, demo session. Perfect. Now, what does the setup look like for somebody that actually wants to do this? How does this work overall? Oh man, that's actually a very good question, you know, because there is no analytics of logs without the data. Mm -hmm. And as you know, logs are coming from various different sources, different operating systems, container platforms, cloud platforms, or open telemetry or other uh, log shippers like Fluent Bits, Fluent Bees, uh, and whatnot. But in Dynatrace, when it comes to the lock ingestion, we are always recommending uh, one agent because then one agent automatically detects all the important locks and reaches the locks with, for instance, a topology or trace contexts and sends them directly to the cluster. But of course, there are situations where you cannot install a one agent, like for instance, in um, services of cloud platforms. There we are offering integrations that are doing exactly the same, contextualizing uh, locks, um, extracting all the relevant information, but the uh, channel that is used for it is the log ingest API. This API can be also used for any custom integration, mm -hmm. if you will. Then all the logs are being processed, stored directly in Grail, and then we have the Dynatrace query language that allows you to get answers um, from logs with the schema on read and powerful visualizations, for instance, in notebooks, dashboards, logs and events, or even for automations in uh, workflows. But today I wanna show something different. I wanna show how are we embedding logs in context of different um, applications that we launched on our platform. Um, there are four applications that are today embedding logs in context. So the clouds, the databases, the infra, an ops app, and the Kubernetes application. Um, I think, Andy, you and my colleagues did already a great job showing casing the apps in the Dynatrace uh, app spotlight, the uh, YouTube, right? Exactly. Yeah. And folks, if you want to see these uh, apps in action, uh, there will be links in the recording. So if you go to the description of this recording, you'll find the link to the app spotlights if you want to really see what these apps look like. But uh, Michael, great overview from left to right. So ingesting any type of logs from many different types of data sources, they are getting processed, stored in Grail. And yes, we give you the power of DQL, but not everybody's uh, familiar with writing queries to get their answers. And that's why I really love that you're bringing a queryless opportunity or queryless capability into all these different apps. Now, can we see this in action? Because PowerPoint looks nice, but I rather want to see this live. And I, I really can't wait. That's why I'm actually here to, to show you the, the demo and how it all looks in action. So let's jump right into it. Um, the first application I want to uh, show you is the uh, Kubernetes application that uh, combines all the signals from your uh, clusters and uses topology to, uh, of Kubernetes to show uh, different signals like the metrics and, and also logs. Here I'm showing you one of the uh, EKS clusters that I'm monitoring and maybe as an uh, engineer I'm responsible for one of the uh, workloads, like for instance the front-end uh, workload. If I open it, I see all the uh, relevant metrics connected to utilization, but also uh, I have access to logs that are coming from this particular um, workload. And here we can see the entire distribution of logs throughout the time and uh, recommended queries. So here, this is the example of how you get into your logs with just a single click. And here with this recommendation, we're getting access to the last uh, 17 errors in the last uh, 30 minutes. The query is generated uh, for us. And as you can see, there were quite some uh, errors. We can jump directly into details and we can see that the uh, credit card um, 
in our online shop um, wasn't uh, wasn't charged when a customer was using he was uh, paying for for the order and this is an error and uh, typically we want to see what was happening before and after the log line when uh, troubleshooting so here with the surrounding log functionality uh, we can see exactly this. This is the selected log line, and here are all the things that happened before it based on the trace ID. So in this uh, example, we also show the power of one agent. Uh, one agent that decorated the log with topology, so put it in the context of Kubernetes, but also decorated it with uh, the trace ID. So thanks to that, we have all the logs coming from all the uh, distributed components that were taking part in the transaction. So for instance, let's check another error. And as you can see, uh, the credit card verification uh, failed for this, uh, for this number because some information were invalid. But what I wanted to show you is that um, this is actually coming from a different service that I was opening on the previous screen. So we have this overview of distributed logs. And we also have the link to uh, trace ID. And we can open it in details uh, to see some details in the distributed traces application. So really cool, Mika, right? this is for me, uh, and you know, having been a developer for many years, fantastic because you just showed me how easy it is a to get to my logs that are relevant. But in distributed systems, I also want to see the logs that are relevant for the transactions that actually fail. And with a single click, without having to know DQL, I get all the logs also from the surrounding or depending components, even the context of the trace itself. Thank you so much. This is just hugely helpful. Yeah. Yeah, this is correct, Andy. Very useful for, for developers, also for our internal teams when we're talking about this feature. They all love it. Mm -hmm. But there is also another feature that um, that brings answers from logs with just a single click. Let me maybe show you first the uh, infrastructure and operations application, and then let's go down to uh, to the to the logs. So in this application. Um, we are uh, showing all the hosts that are monitored throughout the different um, data centers and showing all the relevant uh, signals. Also, the main principle of this application is to always follow the red to make sure that you can jump directly to the to the problems. And here on this host, um, we can see that, that there are some problems, and we have the logs um, logs tab as as in the previous example. And as you can see here, we again have the distribution chart, but also we have some recommendations here mm -hmm. that we can go directly to logs that were connected to this uh, specific problem. And again, with a single click, we get to uh, the all the logs in the time frame of the problem for the specific component that was affected um, by this um, by this problem. All, all of this is thanks to uh, thanks to um, thanks to Davis mm -hmm. AI, and as you can see, there are there are uh, there are tons of logs. But as always with logs, it, it's always good to uh, start with errors and then dive deeper. And if you take a look at this example, we can see that the um, there are some failures in um, in some computation algorithm, and the log is actually uh, saying that I need to contact you, Andy. I don't know if you have <laughs> anything to do about it. <laughs> Yeah, let's let's see if I can if I can figure out why you have CPU issues here. But uh, again, really, you showed two things. First of all, give me the logs at the time when the problem happened, and then with uh, the widget on top, instead of having to then craft queries to filter, we give you all these filter options because it's a very common thing to say: give me all the error logs or give me all the logs that came in from a particular source that contains certain uh, text. Uh, this is all all very easily with point and click. Behind the scenes, I would assume, though, there's still obviously DQL. So if somebody wants to take this and bring it to the next step and then massage the query, that's always possible. But the simplest, the, the simple thing and, they, and getting the data in context is just beautiful here and just uh, really makes life so much easier and developers or whoever looks at this data more efficient. Yeah, you actually raised a very good point, uh, Andy, because... Um... There is always a DQL query behind the scene. The difference is that you don't have to write it on your own, but you can take it with you and, for instance, um, open it in Notebooks, our application for um, collaboration. Mm -hmm. So here, as you can see, this is the underlying uh, query, the same mm -hmm. one as was used to render the logs in context. And with this notebook, I, I can just uh, create a link and share it with you for further investigation. And what's really cool 
uh, thanks to all the context that the locks are decorated with, we can jump directly back to the infrastructure and uh, operations application to expand our context, uh, expand our investigation from locks, getting back to performance metrics, vulnerabilities, problems, mm -hmm. or whatever else was uh, is relevant in this in this context. So Perfect. That's really cool. So easy to get the queries, uh, easy to get the logs, then get the queries, put it in a notebook. Notebook is great for collaboration. Um, there's also a, a videos on how to use notebooks, but being able to also from a log line, because the log line is enriched with contextual data, where did the log come from, like the host, or it could be Kubernetes deployment, or it could be a trace, as we saw earlier, then you can also jump from that context into the right app again to then continue the investigation. Really powerful, really cool, Michael, what you've built here. Yeah, this is correct. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks, Andy. And I'm really looking forward uh, to see this um, being widely, widely adopted because mm. uh, you can see how powerful it can be. Yeah, it is. Now, any any final thoughts? Exactly. Any final thoughts for the people that are watching this? Well, yeah, I have just one ask. Uh, try it on your own. Uh, just start with ingest, use the one agent or any uh, supported integration that you can find in um, in our Dynatrace hub, and then just open the application um, of your of your choice of your domain here. We are support all the locks and all the features that I showed today are available in the clouds application, databases application, infrastructure and operations application, and Kubernetes app. Mm -hmm. So all is there for you. I'm really looking forward to your feedback on our community uh, channel as well. Perfect. And also a quick shout out to the Open Telemetry community or the cloud native community. You mentioned Open Telemetry earlier. We also released recently our own Open Telemetry uh, collector distribution. So if you are invested already in Open Telemetry, there's easy ways to get it into Dynatrace as well. And then all the data is in context and making life so much easier for everyone that needs to look at the con at the data. Thank you so much, Michael. It was really awesome. Looking for more in the future. Uh, thanks, Andy. It was great to be here. And wish you all the best. Thanks. Thank you.